Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Well, welcome to the Concepts of Faith program today. This is my second program with Patsy Caminetti. And if you didn't see the last program, you better call and order it because you're going to want to hear what it has to say. Matter of fact, we make all of our programs available to you on DVD or a download. So check into it. This is, I can't tell you how important this is, honestly. Um, her, we're talking about her book, For Such a Time as This, Praying in the Last Days. And if you don't know we're in the last days, I don't know where you've been, but <laughs> we're in the last days. And um, anyway, Patsy and I've been friends uh, since we met at Rama Bible School is what it was called back then in 1976. And we both attended and she officiated many times at the prayer and healing school that started in 1979. And so we shared about what we learned and it's time to pass that information on mm -hmm. to the next generation, what we learned from Brother Kenneth E. Hagan. And anyway, Patsy and her husband uh, are directors of Rama Australia and pastors of Rama Family Church. So Patsy and I don't get to see each other very often, but I'm inviting you here into our living room today to have a hear our personal conversation because I'm learning from her today and I learned from her book. So brace yourself today. We're going to talk about kings and those in authority, geopolitical situations. And I told Patsy, I'm just going to start this off with a bang. And I believe I quoted this out of your book. Correct me if I'm not, <laughs> I'm not doing this right. Some Listen. Stop what you're doing and listen. Some prophecies can only be fulfilled and accomplished by wicked kings. Patsy, what in the world does, I mean, seriously, we, I've had people, and I promised I'm going to shut up here in a minute, but I have had people call my office, have people talk to me personally, ministers that said we're praying that this political leader will die. And there, because I can't, in all good faith, pray for this person. I can't tell you how much that's happened. What did you mean? <laughs> well, I think the first point has to be, what are we going to take as authority? Is it going to be our opinion? And, um, you know... Surely our opinion is the most important and surely the God of the universe is, is um, consulting us uh, and our opinions. Actually, he is not. And his word is final authority. So uh, the challenge, Annette, was when we take all of these things to the word and submit everything to the word, it, it comes up a little different. And I think there has to be some humbling to the word and what the word has to say about it. So um, it was way back when we were praying for um, the Soviet Union and Brother Hagen was leading us in prayer. We had not prayed these prayers before I grew up in a Pentecostal home where, um, you know, uh, the Soviet Union and some of the, the, um, the stories that we would get from the underground church mm -hmm. were scary to me as a little girl Yes, because, um, pastors were being imprisoned in other place in that place in the world. And, and I, had a vivid imagination and, um, I had a very real fear of that. My daddy would be, you know, called to go to the USSR <laughs> or that they would take us over. Yes. And I had hid Bibles around our house and, and I practiced, um, 
hiding in the laundry chute. Oh. I could suspend myself. Was there. this during the era when they had uh, drills and we hid yes. under our desk at school yes. because it was an atomic drill? Uh, yeah. Okay. It was very real to us. Uh, yeah. So they were coming here as was your fear. I got it. Very. So when we were in that setting and he began teaching us how to pray about it, I had never really prayed into that, prayed for the persecuted church, but had never really prayed the geopolitical situation, mm -hmm. had never really prayed for a shift in right. that part of the world. He actually put the words in our mouth because the words in our mouth were not the words in God's mouth prior to. So he said, say this after me. Oh, right. And he would, he would lead us in a prayer according to the word of God. And then we would pray in other tongues. Right. Until it became first nature to pray yeah. that way. Yeah. But I noticed uh, one of our key scriptures was... 1 Timothy, the second chapter, and it said to pray for. And he would emphasize that. He said, it doesn't say to pray against. Pray for kings and... For all that are in authority. All that are in authority, 1 Timothy 2. 2, 1 yeah. to 4. Yeah. And um, my mind would go for, but we're against but he would make us serve the word rather than to change the word to, or just ignore the word, forget the word. We have better prayers than the word can offer. We're <laughs> going to go our way. He said, no, we're going to pray the word. So we're going to pray the word and not what we feel or exactly. think, which we feel like a certain direction needs to go down, right? Exactly. Okay. Since then, you know, so that altered our words in prayer. It also altered our believing. Uh, uh, actually, our words changed before our believing <laughs> didn't tell you the truth. <laughs> the believing had to catch up a little bit later, yeah. and but it did because we kept going to the word, and then that then it built belief. And then we believed and therefore spoke. And then bam, 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 bam. The word became very strong in the way that we prayed. But um, then you start with that light going through epistles and um, particularly in the life of Paul mm -hmm. and in the life of Peter, particularly those. And you know, Tony and I lived in Italy for right. nine years and Rome for four. And so we've gone <sighs> numerous times to the places where they say that they were decapitated or, you know. Mm -hmm. The martyrs. Yeah. And Rome was terrible. Rome was a terrible, um, tyrannical go government. You cannot find one whinge, not one, not one in the epistles. If the Bible counts for you, if the epistles count for you. Now, if the Bible doesn't matter to you, go for the whinge, <laughs> go for the whinge. <laughs> but if you are, and I'm, I'm talking about this kind of prayer, right? We're talking about spirit-led prayer based on the Word of God. And then we're talking about the scripture that says, I want you to pray for kings and those are in authority. And most of us, Patsy, can pray real well for the ones we like. Yes. For our party, the ones we like. And i got to admit to you, I've got to admit to you, I've had a hard time praying. I know. When I know that someone Me too. is being moved by the devil. The, by the devil. By the devil, I have a hard time praying for him. But when I read your book, see, and I know you've seen all that stuff. You've seen it in Italy. You've seen it in Singapore. You've seen stuff in Australia. And I know you've seen these things in these geopolitical realms. But when I read your book and I saw how that God, God spoke to Elijah 
and said, I want you to anoint Elisha mm -hmm. to be prophet, right? Which is, co Which, that's okay. That's well, common so that for make, us. That makes sense that's to common. us. But when you, when it comes around and says, and, I, and, and God sent then, uh, well, through the prophecy, sent Elisha to anoint Haziel who, of Syrian Syria, king. who was going to destroy the Jews, a lot of the Jewish people. That didn't make sense. And then anoint Jehu, a military leader, who was ruthless and kind of crazy, then, you know, I'm going, what? Where is this anointing going? This, this anointing? I thought the anointing. It's anointing. I thought anointing was on preachers. And on good people. On good That people. deserve the anointing. That deserve it. But you're talking about Haziel, a wicked, uh, well, a pagan, right? And he's anointed, but God's plan. God's plan. God's plan. And that's what I read a minute ago. Some prophecies can only be fulfilled or, accompl or accomplished by wicked kings. Yes. So <laughs> you're not praying for bad things to happen. This is where people get mixed up. Well, that's praying for the devil to do something. No, 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 but no. But know where you're getting into. Please understand this. I want you to listen closely to this. Oh, yes. When you're play, praying from that third platform that we mentioned last program, and you're praying from those heavenly places with God and God's plan and purpose, His plans and purposes are so far beyond your thought that you don't, we don't know what it takes to accomplish us getting from the first coming of Jesus to the second coming Truly. of Jesus and all the twists and the turns. And so... When I saw that, Patsy, I know I got it. And you know what? I thought now I have, other than praying in tongues, which we praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. But I, 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 I suddenly understood that I could pray for those who, in the geopolitical realm, those political re leaders and military, everything. Yeah, I could pray this with my understanding. God, accomplish your will through that person. Yes. Now that person may be wicked, but you know what? God is greater than the wicked. God is oh. greater than the devil. Oh. And God is able to use wicked oh. people yes. to accomplish things in the realm of the spirit that we don't understand. And it's not that God is doing bad things to people. No. It's just that God is moving things into position. Okay. I'm sorry, I've, but I've got to get this across to our audience. Okay, so <laughs> do it. Just jump in anytime you want to. But you talk, you talked in your book. This is For Such a Time as This by Patsy Caminetti. You've got to have this book. Absolutely have to have it. It has done so much for me. But you talked about those, the disciples. What did they think when they saw the whole world rose up against their savior and their Messiah. And to kill him. You talk about Pontius Pilate. You talk about the religious Jews that wanted to kill him. You talk about the Romans who crucified them, who were wicked. Folks, think about this a minute. The Romans were, had the most wicked means of killing criminals and they crucified an innocent man. And yet if if that, that was the plan of God for Jesus to be crucified, if God hadn't used those wicked men, the prophecy to save your soul wouldn't have been Wouldn't have happened. The you know, there, there's three kinds of kings. David, we love that kind. The one yeah. that loves God, you know, yes. and I can pray do, for I can pray for that oh, one. Oh, yeah, we love that king. Loves God, seeking God for his people. Okay, we love that guy. We, we love Cyrus. Cyrus isn't a believer, but he's compassionate towards believers. He's sympathetic towards their causes. He, he facilitates them. Okay, we love Cyrus. Then there's the Pharaoh kind of king. It's like, what do you do with those guys? <laughs> but they, they belong. And Jesus was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. But how, how is that going to be accomplished? And it had to, it had to um, come down through, uh, you know, the way that it did. Somebody had to do something 
that actually was wrong. Somebody he was had acquitted to... four times, and they yeah. still crucified him. Somebody had to do the horrific act. They did. Of, cruci a of crucifying the Son of God. A good king, David wouldn't have done that. No. Cyrus wouldn't have done no. that. But Herod and Pontius Pilate, yeah, they did. And Pharaoh, when you're talking about Pharaoh, I'm glad I put this down here because I could just jump all over the place in this book, but on page 70, you're talking about Pharaoh. And there was, in Romans 9, 17, it says, for the scripture says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for this very purpose. Who, who thinks Pharaoh was an anointed of God? No, but I have raised you up for this very purpose. You say he employed Pharaoh to demonstrate his power. We may think that we need to pray against these type of kings, but what happened is because he so hardened his heart that God was able to perform his miracles and get the children of Israel out of Egypt quickly. He did. That's what you said, and that's right. He, he did. Some of the most dramatic things in the plans of God bounce off of wicked people. And this is the most amazing thing that I think that we um, could be delighted with if we will submit to the word. The devil thinks he has some things wrapped up. <laughs> uh, because he thinks, if I can get that terrible leader there, I can get this terrible leader there, it'll cut off the plan of God. It'll cut off the plan of God. It'll cut off the plan of God. But actually, what he doesn't know is he's setting something up. Mm -hmm. Just like redemptive, the, the redemptive story, if he would have known what he was doing, the scripture says he would have mm -hmm. never crucified, crucified Jesus. Yes. It was a setup. Will God just divulge all of his plans? No. He has to have people, and thank God, he includes us now. Yeah. But there was nobody on earth that knew what Jesus was doing. Moses and Elijah came and talked to him, you know, on the Mount, yeah. Mount of Transfiguration. But nobody got what Jesus was doing. Yeah. They tried to stop him. Even Peter did. Even Peter. His own disciples. But thank God... God's plan was accomplished <laughs> through wicked people. Through wicked people. Can God do that? Think about it. If God had to wait for everybody to be a David or a Cyrus, it would be a long wait. Oh, Lord have mercy. But God can move kings and people and places. And, <sighs> you know, even geography can shift. Even geopolitical systems. You know, this is... I just recently ministered on this, on the, those, those rulers. Yes. I'm going to call them rulers of darkness. That's not the exact, but the rulers of darkness over different countries, yes. you know, like uh, Daniel with Persia. Yes. And the king of Persia, the prince of Persia, you know, the king of Tyre. All of this, these are not, these rulers are being moved by those who are reigning in the spiritual wickedness in mm -hmm. heavenly places. And those borders shift Yes. and contract and expand according to what's going on down here. And it's, is it, Patsy, is it according to the prayers of the saints as they pray the mysteries of God that those geopolitical borders expand and contract? We are the only ones that have higher seating than any of them. Say what you mean by that. When we were raised with Christ, Ephesians Two, verse 6, we were raised with him and made to sit with him in heavenly places. It is far above any, any other Principality, power, ruler of the darkness, any. wicked spirit. So we have, we have joint seating with Jesus in, um, in these, in this, uh, what would you call it, uh, governing, if we'll do it rather than come down here and just and look at the world and listen to the news and be affected by it and be depressed by it and angered by it. 
Now we have assignment. People have assignment into it. Bless the Lord. Good. Do that. But where prayer is concerned, you want to go to the highest elevation. And, um, and the highest elevation is where we are seated, seated together with him in heavenly places where we need to find the plan of God to pray, not what we think. No. Now, see, this past, this is what's happened is that politically things shifted and everybody goes, what happened? We prayed. Yes. We prayed. This, it didn't do any good. No. This is what they're saying with their mouth, but that's not correct. If you're praying in the spirit, if you're interceding, if you're praying the will, plan, and purpose of God. It never suffers loss. It's a setup. So a lot of this stuff that we're seeing, this, I, I, for lack of a better word, the filth yes. that's coming yes. out, the yes. uncleanness, yes. The, yes. the mutilation of people oh. in every way. And I'm talking about multiple ways here, not just what you're thinking on there. I'm talking about multiple things. All of these, the stuff that is coming out, it's it's been there, but it's been under the surface mm -hmm. and it's being exposed. So when we pray and we're praying from that spirit led prayer and we're praying from that high place, mm -hmm. then it's also possible that our prayers manifest ugliness in the world. It does. For it to be exposed. It does. And you know what? That's okay. Yeah. It's we don't okay. have to stand back and go, well, it didn't work or it would turn out beautiful. It no. will. It will when Jesus returns and rules and reigns. Exactly. That's another thing that happens when you pray in this way. Time ceases to be your enemy. Ah. You're Say okay. that again. Say that again. When you pray with God in the realm of the spirit, there's an eternal element about it where time ceases to be your enemy. And you're not looking at the clock when you pray or the calendar or the four-year election cycle. You're not. You're working with him. And he is rock of ages. He will accomplish his plan. And he would love to have some somebody believe that he can. <laughs> and we do. I do. I do. You know, I, we're running out of time here, but I... I've got to tell you what happened to me one time that, you know, I was talking to you earlier about that time I was praying and that thing happened. Yes. And God spoke to me just not in an audible voice, but so loud and booming in my spirit. And he was just laughing. He said, you really don't think I have this figured out? <laughs> he said, you really think the devil's stronger than I am? Oh. You really think the devil's more powerful than I am? Do you think I don't have this figured out? Oh, he's got it. Woo. He has got it. I'm like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. You've got it figured out. It doesn't matter what I've seen. You've got it figured out. You've got it. So if you missed the first one, if you need this program, you want to know all the things Patsy and I talked about. It's available, but I'm, I'm asking you, there are people watching right now, I'm asking you, can you join with the Father God from that heavenly mm. place and mm. seek the throne of God, the, the, the plans and purposes of God and hear from him and join us in prayer against the forces of darkness to bring about the perfect will, plan and purpose of God on this earth. Will you do that? I'm asking people to learn to pray from that high place of spirit led prayer. And you're going to need this book to understand some of those things because it will take you there by the spirit and by the anointing. So I'll be back in just a minute and tell you how to get that book. Wow. That's all I have to say is wow. Learning about these three platforms of prayer from Patsy, learning about the things uh, that we need to know about praying in this last day is powerful. You've got to have this book for such a time as this, Praying in the Last Days. This book has been fantastic. It's just amazing. There's so much that will help you to understand, especially about 
areas of, about geopolitical things, uh, about uh, government, praying for government. When you don't want to, it's great. So I'm going to make this offer to you. It's offer twenty nine twenty four. It's $16, and that includes shipping and handling. And I'm going to include a little pamphlet I wrote called How to Pray the Prayer of Faith. And it's just simple directions on how you can pray the prayer of faith. So the, that you can order for $16. You say, oh, I ordered that last time. Well, look at this. I've got a book that my dad wrote, Charles Capps, called Releasing the Ability of God Through Prayer. There are some things that God can only do through your prayers upon this earth. You say, well, I thought God could do anything. He can, but there's a lease on the earth and a specified period of time. And he's given the authority to the body of Christ. And there's so many different types of prayer. So you need to get a good foundation on how to pray. And the areas that Patsy and I are going into on these programs are praying from the heavenly places in the throne of God, praying his will, plan, and purpose. This book fits right into that because it talks about some of the areas of the Bible, some of the scriptures have been used that have caused people to misunderstand what praying is all about. For instance, do you remember the parable Jesus gave of the unjust judge and the widow? And he said, I'm going to give her what she wanted because lest her continual coming, she wear me out or annoy me. And so people have taken that as a prayer scripture. But something doesn't work about that. Think about this just a minute. It says he's an unjust judge. Did you realize that? We can't compare God to an unjust judge. So, there, you know, that's where people get the idea we just got to beg and plead and do all that. And if we do, then God will give in. But that, that's not correct. So we need to learn by the scriptures how to pray and release God's power through our prayers. So that's releasing the ability of God through prayer. You can order it separately if you want to. $16 includes shipping and handling. Or you can get all three of these items for a cost, or I should say, a gift of $23 to this ministry, and that includes shipping. I don't have to tell you what a great deal that is because this book, you know, two of them at $16, and we're including the pamphlet. So most of all... I want you to have this so you know how to pray, so that you can stand with us against the power of darkness that's in your life and that's trying to come against our country and trying to come against the world. We rule and reign with Christ, so gather up your authority and stand against it. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our mp3 teachings ebooks and watch other programs on demand this broadcast has been sponsored by caps ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the word of god to work in the everyday circumstances of your life